And we're back with the Sports Forum Radio Show here on 98.1 FM Mile High Sports. This segment is powered by our friends over at Jackson Sports Bar. Make sure you guys check out 15, 20, 20 a Street in Denver, Colorado this weekend. Tonight, guys, UFC 303 going down at the bar. Come out and watch the fights totally free. Going to be a great time. Going to be a great crowd out there. Come enjoy it. But we got our man Edward Boylan, a.k.a. Mr. Cheddar Betters, is in the building to bring you guys the best bets for UFC 303. My man, it is good to see you. Overall thoughts of this card before we jump in. How do you feel about it? Man, you know, I good to see you too, first of all. And yeah, the card the card was really sexy in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And UFC did everything they can to salvage this thing. And they did a pretty good job. It's a really nice card overall. Yeah. It's a good quality pay-per-view. And listen, I think, uh, I forget who said it uh, the other day. Um, I might have been it might have been Joe Rogan. It might have been somebody else. But, yeah, Alex Pajeda is really stepping in that role of being the face of the UFC now. Yeah. Mm, interesting take there. But I think you're right, man. Everyone's starting to like this guy. And with, with how active he is, right, it's hard to say that he's not becoming the face of the UFC. But with that, I know we're going to get to that fight here, guys, in just a few minutes. But first, we got a banger right out the gate. This one here got potential to be the fight of the night if these guys show up and do what they can do. We got Michael Page taking on Ian Machado. Gary, Gary coming in here, minus 155, filling in that villain role, as they're calling him there at the pre-fight press conference. Michael Page, big opportunity here, Cheddar, plus 130 on the money line in the dog spot. A lot of people saying that this is MVP's time to break through. Others saying this is where Gary finishes him. How do you think this one goes? Yeah, so MVP has one advantage and one advantage only in this fight. He's got a five-inch reach, and he's the superior striker. Other than that, everything's going in Gary's way. doesn't mean I'm betting on Gary, but at the end of the day, Gary checks all the boxes statistically. He's nine years younger. He's in the prime of his prime. Uh, you can say what you want about the guy personally. I'm not the biggest fan ever of Ian Gary, but, um, but I mean, he's got a quality resume that he's put together, and you know, for, for a guy who's who's on the come up in the UFC, you can make the argument that his resume is pretty damn similar to Michael mm-hmm. Page, Michael Venom Page. I mean, that's insane for a guy who's at the end of his career um, to, to not have that many big names on his resume is wild. And, yeah. you know, call a spade a spade here. I mean, we know what happens to fighters over 35 years old. Gary is going to be the biggest test against MVP uh, to see how well, how good his wrestling is. And we're not talking about takedown wrestling. We're not talking about freestyle wrestling or Greco. We're talking about ability to control against the wall, pummeling, using your hips, using your shoulders, keeping the fight standing, but fighting for positioning against the wall. MVP hasn't been tested like that against a guy like Gary. So I definitely see the line being totally fair. I think I'm going to stay off this one. Um, mm. But Gary's got a little bit of an edge, I think. And, you know, uh, MVP for a, as fancy of a striker as he is, he doesn't throw a lot of volume either. He's not a big volume yeah. striker, um, and and Gary probably has the edge there too. So yeah, I definitely lean Gary. I think minus one fifty, minus one sixty, whatever the line's at now, that's pretty fair. I'm right there with you, man. I know a lot of people are going the Michael Page way, and folks, I don't blame you if you guys do some juicy plus money there on a very up and coming great fighter. I actually really like MVP. I just think that Ian Gary is better than a lot of people give him credit for. He's got the power advantage here. And I think as long as he fights a smart fight and doesn't get frustrated by that movement, obviously, from MVP, Ian Gary is going to take this thing if he fights his fight. If he gets in his head, who knows where this thing's going to go. But good luck to everybody in that one. We are both saying Ian Gary to get it done there. But jumping on over to the co-main event of the evening. And my man, I'm very excited about this fight. Every time this man steps in the octagon, I think it's going to be entertaining. And that is Brian Ortega taking on Diego Lopez, the up and comer, kind of the fan favorite here on this card or really, especially in this fight, Brian Ortega plus 120 on the money line, Diego Lopez coming in minus 142 Lopez also getting 65% of the bets here. Do you agree with the public in this spot? Yeah, I do. Um, I was initially thinking this should be a coin flip. Um, looking through Ortega's film history, I mean, the guy's had one heck of a career, but you know, you, you pick up on the fact that he catches people late, right? He catches people. Mm -hmm. He, there aren't many fights in the top five where he's dominating from the beginning. And Diego Lopez is a dominator. This guy likes to dominate from the 
from the sound of the first bell until you're done unconscious. He is in complete control of these fights. You know, I look back at the fight that he had to get into the UFC that he took on short notice against arguably the second most boring fighter in the UFC behind Bilal Muhammad. He fought Movsar Evloyev on short notice to get into the UFC. And man, he gave him a run. A lot of people think Evloyev is that guy. He's going to be the guy at 145. He's just so boring to watch. Mm -hmm. um, Lopez is bigger. He's taller. He's faster than Brian Ortega. He's proven that, you know, at, at least he's at the same level grappling wise to Brian Ortega. I don't think Brian Ortega is going to have a superior advantage in the grappling and he's not going to be catching Diego Lopez in any bad positions. That guy isn't tapping. Um, the fight, by the way, is now at lightweight. It's at 155, not 145. And I can definitely tell you that Diego Lopez cuts a ton of weight. I couldn't really tell how much weight Ortega was cutting when he got on the uh -huh. scales, but Diego Lopez is cutting a lot of weight. Uh, so this is a this is definitely a benefit for him in this fight. I like the line. Minus 135, minus 140. Give me Diego Lopez all night long in this one. He's going to make a stamp. All right. Well, then I'm... Look, this is so hard for me because I think the UFC wants Diego Lopez to win. I think Diego Lopez should be favored in this fight, but I have a really tough time fading Brian Ortega, man. I just really like the way that the guy fights. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to take Brian Ortega plus 300 by decision. I think he can get him on the ground. I don't know if he's going to wrap him up and tap him, but we all know if anyone's going to do it, Brian Ortega could wrap up anybody, but I do think that he can try to find a way to control it. I see this one being a split decision. I don't know which guy it's going to go to, but you're going to tell me I can get plus 300 on Ortega. I'll take my chances there by decision. Guys, Cheddar going Diego Lopez, and I don't blame anybody for going Diego. I would say if you're just trying to throw a parlay piece, it's a pretty darn good money line to throw in there. But one more fight for you guys until we get to our play of the day. We are looking here, man, at the main event of the evening. Yuri Prohashka. Hey, I'm getting good at these UFC names, guys. Taking on Alex <laughs> Pajeda. Yeah, you heard it here first, not Pereira. My man, looking at this one, Alex is coming in. Minus 142 on the money line. Yuri coming in at plus 120. Obviously, two big dogs, two bangers. This is a rematch of a fight here. Do you think Yuri can uh, take that belt off of Alex? Yuri is the most unorthodox fighter that Alex Pajeda has ever fought in his career. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and Prohashka is extremely durable. Like, he does not go down. This guy, even in the first fight, I was there at the Garden. I was lucky enough to see that one live. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Pajeda, like, he didn't knock him out. Like, like Prohashka wasn't out in that fight. But it was definitely, I, I think it was a good stoppage. I think it was fair. Um, mm -hmm. But look. As seen in the first fight, Alex Pajeda will adapt and find patterns in Yuri's unorthodox approach. Yuri's mm -hmm. very weird. He comes at you from different angles. He counters very well. And Pajeda's weakness is, is counter strikes, right? His defense has holes in it. We've seen that. Seen it with Izzy. Um, and we've definitely seen it with a little bit in the Yuri fight. But at the end of the day, Alex's is, um, uh, his defense is, is a weakness. But he's still got a chin, too. You know, he's not chinny yet, uh -huh. um, in my opinion. I think that when it comes down to two very skilled kickboxers, the guy who's uh, a technician, who's an orthodox style, who's who's been that way for his whole career, I take my money on that guy over the guy who's super unorthodox and goofy in there. Uh, I don't think Yuri will implement wrestling, by the way. That was another big question. And uh -huh. um, last note on this is uh, there's some speculation that Alex's toe is still broken. Um, media hasn't really been all over it. I, I don't think it's a huge deal. I think the bigger deal is that they're both coming to, to cut weight again. Um, on yeah. 11, uh, with a short notice, 11 weeks since their last fight. Um, both guys are on short notice. So yeah, I mean, I think the value here is an Alex win and over two and a half rounds because usually when guys rematch, it doesn't go that quickly. Yeah, and one thing I saw about Yuri in that pre-fight presser was you know, him saying, hey, I didn't feel like myself last time out. I feel better right now than I've ever felt. Those are things that maybe that's a mental thing and he's just trying to tell himself that last time something happened and now I'm ready to go. Maybe that's in his mind, but I'm with you here, man. And I feel like a square, to be honest with you, because I think everyone likes Alex in this fight. And so I really want to go with Yuri here, but that power it's just too much for me here. So I'm with you. I'm going to go Alex. And I do think those leg kicks 
play a very big role here. Takedown defense is going to look good for Alex. Just feels like Yuri's going to get frustrated in this fight and not really have anywhere to go with it. So guys, we're both going Alex Pajeda to get this thing done. But Cheddar, we got to jump on over, my man, before we wrap this thing up, as we always do, our UFC 303 play of the day. In this case, folks, this is going to be our same game parlay of the day. Cheddar, I will let you take the floor here, man. Folks, this is two legs in a same game parlay. What you got for him? Man, I'm loving this Andre Feely Cub Swanson fight. You got an age advantage here. Feely's been looking good in his last few fights. He's definitely looking mm -hmm. clean. We know that he's a guy who just can't crack the top 15. And the guy can bang. Cub Swanson's got a chin. These guys are going to bang for three rounds. I'm taking Andre Feely money line, parlay mm -hmm. it with the over one and a half rounds. It's plus 120. And call me crazy, but I'm throwing a dog pick in here. Uh -oh. I know everyone's going to think Martin Boudet is the way to go, and that's the easy bet. Stay away from that one. He's beaten absolutely nobody in his entire career. And Andre yep. Arlovsky at plus 220, that's got some value. Put some money on the old man. I knew you were going to say something about Arlovsky before you got out of here. Man, I, it's hard not to, right? Because every time you see him, he's this big dog, and he goes out there and he shocks the world, and he's a parlay killer all the freaking time. So, hey, I like it. Let's take the old man to get it done, guys. But also, one more time, the Sports Forums UFC 303 parlay of the day, guys. Andre Philly money line, touchy Philly, and over one and a half rounds there at plus 120. 